Marshal. Morning. Just tell me where I can find the offices of your newspaper. Turn it to First Street, about a half a block down. You can't miss it. Thank you kindly. Hey, here, can I help you? Maybe the boy needs a hand. Oh, the Cartwrights can take care of themselves. Well, sounds like he's getting the worst of it. Yeah, sounds like he is. <laughs> Looks like somebody in there is hard to convince. Say, uh, you are the marshal here, aren't you? That's right, stranger. Well, uh, shouldn't you go in there and break it up? Reckon not. People in this town mind their own business. Come on, get out of the way. Look, I told you to stay out of it! Listen, little Joe. Pa told me to take care of you, and that's exactly what I aim to do. Okay, well, I can take care of myself. Little Joe, you get up on that pony right now, or else I'm just going to naturally clobber you. Who's the big fella? Oh, him? He's another Cartwright. I'm new in Virginia City. So I noticed. It's quite a town. Who are the Cartwrights? Oh, I reckon you'll find that out soon enough. I haven't asked you who you are, have I? <laughs> well, that's right, you haven't. Maybe you shouldn't ask so many questions. Like I said, this is the kind of town where folks mind their own business. Me whose uh, horse I'm holding, ma'am? Well, you haven't been around Virginia City very long. A couple of hours, that's all. Judge Jeremy C. Billington. Oh, is that so? Uh, the C stands for Clarence. Judge Jeremy Clarence Billington. Judge Jeremy Clarence Billington. He's the judge here in Virginia City. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I've noticed. I'm his wife. The judge says I'm a big help to him in his career. Oh, I can say that for myself, ma'am. Virginia City Superior Court judges, many friends in Virginia City, have prevailed, have prevailed upon him to again seek office in the coming election as judge of the Superior Court. <clears throat> Very nice. <clears throat> there you are, my good man. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Many? How many times have I spoken to you about talking to strange men? I wasn't talking to him. He was talking to me. <laughs> if you're... If you're trying to sell shares in your diggings, old-timer, I'm not interested. Well, as a matter of fact, you're looking at the most unsuccessful prospector that ever blistered his hands on a pick handle. Then what brings you to a newspaper office? Your letter offering me a job. What's your name, friend? Sam Clemens. Sam Clemens! Oh, I figured as long as I was starving, I might as well do it sitting on my backside at a job I know something about. You didn't strike it rich, huh? <laughs> Good looking press. No, all I did was prove how little an Eastern Tenderfoot knows about mining. Sam, it's good to see you. And I think you're going to like Virginia City. Well, I've been uh, studying some of the people. Uh, how often do you publish? Every day. Every day? A <laughs> little one-horse town 2,000 miles west of the Mississippi? Sam, the way we see it, the Mississippi's 2,000 miles east of Virginia City. <laughs> Sam, you're looking at the only Bible the miners around here have any time to read. Well, what if they can't read? Then they get someone who can read it to them. <laughs> I like that. I think I'm going to like this town. It's a city, Virginia City. Virginia City. A noisy, rough lady with a lot of pride. I think I'm gonna like her. Over here. Here, old man. 
just eating my supper. out. You mean drinking it, don't you? You be mighty careful of that campfire. As soon as you get through eating, you clear out of here. I mean to, mister. Hey, we got a lot of cattle here on the Ponderosa. That fire got out of control, we'd be in trouble. Reckon I know that. Anyhow, I'm just passing through. Well, the next time you just go around, you hear? Come on. <laughs> Mighty. Think I ain't got no sense telling me to put out a fire. <laughs> Them cartwrights will get there come up on Sunday. Spirit of some engine come back to Earth. Come on, you. Let's get out of here. Things aren't always just what they seem in this town, Sam. Well, I'm learning fast. The Cartwrights like to fight. Judge Billington's word is law. And uh, his wife. Say, where'd she come from, anyway? She was in the chorus of a traveling girly show. Oh, <laughs> that figures. You know, I. Uh, I might write a series of articles on the colorful citizens of Virginia City. Which would land you in jail or up on Boot Hill. Well, let's get back to paper. Right. Got a lot of characters you got here. What kind of things they like to read? Oh, anything, as long as you keep it humorous. These men see death and disaster in the mines every day. They want to read something that'll make them laugh. And make them forget that maybe tomorrow they'll be dead or broke or both. That's right. Well, it's about time you fellas got home. What's new in town? Still is a tomb, Paul. Yeah, nothing happening. Yeah. Hey. What's your man, Captain High Valley? What are they doing there? I don't know. Let's find out. All right, come on, let's go. <laughs> Stuff in the wagon, quick. Hey, what are you men doing here? Wait a minute, Cartwright. We don't want any trouble. You're trespassing on private property, mister. Well, you fellas own so much land around here, it's kind of hard to figure where your property ends and the rest of the world begins. Well, if you have any trouble figuring it, mister, we'll be happy to oblige you. Oh, we're pulling out. Now, what were you doing here in the first place? Doing a little sightseeing. Thought one day you might want to sell off some of this land. What have you got in the wagon? Just some prospecting equipment. Uh, let's not hold them up, boys. The man said they were moving on. The next time you, uh, you want to know where the rest of the world begins, you might try asking. Oh, no. All right. Oh. Wait a minute. What is it? It's like some kind of surveying equipment. It looked like them guys was lying when they said something about buying some land. Oh, they're interested in land, all right. I just don't think they're interested in buying any of it.
drinks are two bits, old timer. Oh, uh, uh, half a drink, maybe. I can't recommend it, but help yourself. Oh, oh, thank you. That's mighty sociable of you, stranger. Mighty sociable. <laughs> I, uh, I don't know you, do I? Nope. Then uh, how come you? Oh, well, uh... let's just say that today I'm filled with a milk of human kindness. <laughs> That don't taste much like milk. <laughs> or human kindness, either. <laughs> I, I sure needed that one. Covered a lot of territory today, huh? Oh, all the way from Ponderosa. Ponderosa? I didn't know the Cartwrights allowed prospecting. Well, they don't. They run me off at high noon. But they'll get their comeuppance. <laughs> I never saw a spirit dog in a place yet. The trouble didn't bust out. A what? A spirit. Uh, this one lives in the trees. It, uh, it'd come out and watch me all the time I was fixing to leave. Uh, who watched you? The, the spirit. And uh, what did the spirit look like? Oh, oh, it was, uh, it was big and black and active as two tomcats on a back fence. How big? Well, uh, it could have been about ten foot, maybe. Maybe even more? Oh, oh, uh, could have been uh, uh, 15 or 20 foot, maybe. And wild, huh? Oh, wildest thing you ever saw. Uh, wilder than a warshoe zephyr. It flit from tree to tree with a man's Anita bush in each hand and a wagon tongue in his mouth. Mm. 20 feet tall. That's what I call a man-sized spirit. <laughs> Reported to be 20 feet tall and covered with long black hair, the wild man is said to flit from tree to tree carrying off cattle and picking his teeth with a wagon tongue. By all this wonderful whatever inspired this. Well, you said your readers liked a few laughs. Just so no one questions your sources. Well, I admit it's secondhand reporting, but uh, my source was pretty reliable. That is until he had a couple of drinks under his belt and then he uh, tended to exaggerate. <laughs> well, it's plain enough to see what they were up to. You follow High Valley, bridge the Truckee, and drop down the West Slope. A natural route for cutting a road right through our property. A yeah, road or railroad. They intended to sneak in, make their survey, and sneak out before anybody ever saw them. Well, the question is, why and for whom? Uh, come quick! Come quick! Too many oh, people! Up, people everywhere! All over Ponderosa! Up, sing, you've got a bigger imagination. Hey, Hey, Pa, you and Adam better get out of here. There's people all over the place. They come to see the wild man. What? What, what wild man? Look, right here in the Enterprise. Wild man of Washoe, loose on Ponder... Now, what fool put a thing like that in the paper? Well, there's the name of the man who wrote it, Josh. Sam, take a look at this telegram. The San Francisco Bugle. Confirm wild man story. Flooded with inquiries. <laughs> Big city newspaper, too. Uh, which one of you fellows is Josh? Oh, that's sort of a pen name I use. Uh, did you, uh, write this? The Wild Man story? Yeah, sure I did. How'd you like it, Mr., uh, I'm sorry, I didn't get your name. Uh, Cartwright. Adam Cartwright. Uh, I'm Sam Clemens. Uh, I haven't been in Virginia City very long. Then I'm afraid you're not going to be around very much longer, Mr. Clemens. You see, this little, uh, contribution to literature, uh, brought 500 people tramping across the Ponderosa this morning. As many as that? Yes, they, uh, ruined the field of hay and scared the wits out of a herd of cows. Uh, we had to rescue four of them out of the duck pond. And uh, my people are still trying to round up the rest of them. Well, it was just a bit of sagebrush humor. We, we had no idea folks would take it seriously. <laughs> yes. Well, I want a retraction of the uh, wild man story to keep these fools off our land. Oh, well, I'm, a, I'm afraid that's uh, kind of hard to do, Mr. Cartwright. You see, uh, I got the story from a very reliable source. Then you leave me no choice. I presume you know how to handle a gun. Oh, now, hold on, Mr. Cartwright. Uh, I haven't got any gun. Uh, maybe you're pretty good with your fists, huh? Why, sure. Uh, when I was uh, steamboating on the Mississippi, the fellow didn't like me very much. We had quite a fight until I tripped over a rope. Of course, he outweighed me about five pounds. Uh, come to think of it, uh, I sort of hate to mess up these new clothes I just bought. Couldn't we uh, settle this a little more peaceably? Are you trying to make a fool out of me? Now, I want that retraction in tomorrow's newspaper. Well, you're making this a little difficult. Uh, you see, the Enterprise never apologizes for stories it prints. It's uh, kind of a policy. I see. Well, maybe I can help change that policy.
Uh, you understand about that retraction? You, you, you'll get your uh, you'll get your retraction, Mr. Carver. Thank you. You all right, Sam? Whew. I kind of like those Cartwrights. That Josh fella. Who have you got there? Found this boy roaming the hills. Is he all right? He's all right. Take him in the wash house. Let Hop Singh wash him up. Go. Come on. Seems to me this Josh fella had you buffaloed, Adam. Well, what are you going to do when a man won't fight? What kind of a man is he? A coward? I don't know. Anyway, he promised to print a retraction. Well, I certainly hope he does. I don't want some fool reporter printing stories that'll send more people out here. Well, it's hard enough as it is to keep an eye out for strangers. Now, listen, boys, I want you to be careful. Don't ride out by yourselves anymore. If someone is going to pull a land grab on us, they can't hide their hand much longer. <laughs> Make a fine supper, wash a dish, no time for foolish men. Now, just settle down, Hop Singh. We got enough trouble around here already. You got trouble. Hop Singh got the foolish men. Give a boy, you say wash up clean? Boy? Ain't no boy around here. Oh, Adam found some lad wandering around. Well, what'd you do with him, Hop Singh? Him no boy, him girl. What? You go look see, please. Well, Adam, if you don't know a boy from a girl. <laughs> Shut up. Where is he? I mean, she. Still in the wash house. Well, bring her in here. No can do, boys. Burn up close. All fairly bad shape. You know, I think I'd better see what I can do about this. Maybe you just better stay right where you are. <laughs> Good luck, Adam. You in there? Put this on and come on out. I tell you, I found her in the brush, and that's all I know. Yeah, well, you should have asked me, Adam. I could have told you it was a girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are we going to do with her? Well, we'll get rid of her. This way, Missy. Folks, no relatives? Well, perhaps, perhaps you'd rather not talk until morning. No, 
I think you're friends. My name is Rosemary Lawson. My father and I left San Francisco to come to Virginia City by wagon. My father was a school teacher, but he wanted to look for silver. We didn't have any trouble until we got into the mountains. Then one night, we were camped near the Truckee River. It was very beautiful there. We were very happy. We sat by the fire and Daddy sang some old songs to me. Then I went to bed in the wagon. Later, I was awakened by pistol shots. I looked out and there were strange men in camp. They killed my father. Um, I think you've, uh, you've talked enough for tonight, Rosemary. Perhaps saying, see that you get some hot food and uh, prepare that room at the end of the bunkhouse. You rest well. Remember that Philly colt we found in the upper pasture last spring? Some skunk of a hunter had killed its mammy? Yeah, I remember. She was scared to death, too. Took us all day long to run her down. They did more to her than kill her father. What are you doing here? I'm Dr. Ephraim Lovejoy. I represent, sir, a group of distinguished scientists. Scientists? Adam, what's in that wagon? Some kind of steel hooks. Grappling hooks. I'm going to fish for the body in the lake. The body? What are you talking about? With the body of the wild man, of course. Didn't you read about it in the Territorial Enterprise? I expect to get off an immediate report to my scientific group. What does it say, Paul? Wild man of Washoe is dead. His body having been consigned to the waters of Lake Tahoe, it will now sink to a depth of 200 feet where it will remain motionless and cased in a block of ice while the pressure encountered reduces it to the stature of a child. I thought they was going to print a retraction. Yeah, some retraction you got, Adam. Surely, gentlemen, for scientific reasons. That article uh, was written by a lion newspaper reporter named Josh. Uh, I had that buggy back towards Virginia City and fast. Well. And put out the fire. Looks like you got your retraction. Josh killed off the wild man. Well, the next time I'm in town, I think I'll pay this Josh fellow a little visit. And I tell you, my friends, that never in the history of Virginia City has there been a greater need for a guardian of the rights of the working man. The miners who are putting the name Virginia City on the map. And those rights will be guarded. Now then, gentlemen, step up to the bar. Drinks are on me. That's right, that one. Drink up, boys. It's on the judge. Yes, sir. There's two ways of winning an election. One's by going around making speeches, and the other's by sitting still and making friends. Friend, here's mud in your eye. Well, I remember you. And I remember you, Mrs. Billington. 
friend see on election day. I uh, didn't invite you to sit down. Thank you anyway. You're a very good health man. And to the election of Jeremy C. Billington. You didn't come here to buy my vote. Well, he's the best man, isn't he? And what I always say, let the best man win. Don't you worry about it. My husband always wins. You know, uh, Mrs. Billington, there's a funny thing about elections and contests of any kind. You never really know how they're going to work out. Now, back a couple of months ago, I was in California, a place called Calaveras County. And the folks there seemed to think that they wanted to hold a sort of a, a little uh, frog jumping contest. Yeah, I heard about it. You're the fellow thinks up all that junk. Signs himself Josh. Well, I uh, wouldn't exactly call it junk, ma'am. All right, what would you call it? Well, uh, I'd call it some uh, pretty fancy writing. Take my word for it, it's junk. Well, maybe you're right at that. A smart fellow like you shouldn't ought to be wasting his time writing. Or any other kind of silly stuff like that. <laughs> well, uh, what should I ought to do? You see, I, I tried prospecting, I couldn't make a dime. Prospecting? <laughs> That's almost as bad as riding. There's a lot better ways of making a pile than going out in the hills digging for it. <laughs> hey, yes, I guess there are. Now you take politics. There's a big future in politics. Well, there, there has been one for the last uh, 5,000 years. <laughs> no, I mean right here in Nevada. A fellow like you could go places in Nevada. Well, you see, there are a few places I'd rather see first. Well, what kind of places are you talking about? Oh, uh, London, Paris, Rome. You see, uh, when you're from Missouri, you've got to get out and take a good look at the world. Well, whatever for? Oh, to understand the, your own hometown, the friends you had when you were a child, sailing down the, the Mississippi on a raft, and, oh, you know, all kinds of junk like that. Believe me, you won't make a dime doing that either. The money's out here in Nevada. Like uh, when you get elected judge? What's wrong with being elected judge? Oh, nothing, except the way it's done. You may be able to buy some votes with us, but uh, you won't be able to buy what we print in the Enterprise. One way or another, my husband's going to be elected judge. Isn't that uh, sort of up to the voters? Well, I'll uh, see you on election day, ma'am. Oh, and just for the record, Mrs. Bellington, I may never make a dime writing all that junk, but... Uh, Here's one vote that's sort of hard to buy, and I uh, like to pay for my own drinks. Sam, I need a filler for page three. You know, something short and snappy. Yeah, I know. Give him a few laughs, huh? What's eating you? Oh, I don't know, Bill. I guess I'm getting a little tired of writing sagebrush humor. But you write this kind of stuff so well. Well, that's just it. It's, it's stuff. I like humorous writing, but I like to say something along with it. You make the miners laugh. That's the important thing. It is? How about making them think for a change, huh? About what? Well, the election, for instance. About the right honorable Jeremy C. Billington. I don't think anybody in Virginia City knows there's another man running for judge. Well, there's Henry Walker, of course. He runs against Jeremy every time and always loses. People are getting pretty used to electing Billington Judge, aren't they? Yes, I guess by now they are. Then why is he spending so much money on his campaign this time, hmm? Now that you mention it, it is kind of unusual. Yeah, some of those Paris gowns that Minnie Billington wears. Miners are so busy looking at her low necklines, they forget who's paying for them. Are you afraid the Enterprise won't print any story you happen to dig up? You know, I had a little bet with myself that you'd go along with me. Sam, this is a newspaper, not a comic strip. You come up with a story and an Enterprise will print it. Just as long as I sign it. Just as long as you sign it. All right. Well, let me see. Get out of here.
Just a crease. He ain't hurt bad. You better have a good story this time, mister. I've got nothing to say. Well, you better think of something. Quick. Why take it out on me? The man you want is back in Virginia City. Get his horse. Ah, my dear, today you are the epitome of feminine pulchritude. Don't you talk dirty to me, Jeremy Billington. <laughs> I won't be long, my dear. Daniel Lash. What's the meaning of this? We'll ask the questions, gentlemen. I wouldn't like to cite you into my court for threatening. You set out. Uh, we didn't come here to threaten anyone. We came here to warn you. Now, you stay away from us, Lash. There'll be no land grab in the Ponderosa. Next time your men start shooting at us, we won't be bringing them back to you alive. <laughs> I uh, think railroad stocks took a little drop. It just doesn't make sense, Pa. Why would they bypass the main railroad line just in order to cut across the Ponderosa? 25,000 acres of prime timber and grazing land. That's reason enough, isn't it? Well, the railroad people could grab that much land just by checkerboarding it right away across our property. Well, by checkerboarding, they could seal off every other square mile of land. That's right. Yeah, but, Paul, would any court in the land approve a right away that ain't nothing but a front for a land grab? Not unless they got to a judge. Hey, you mean Judge Billington? I don't think it was any coincidence at all that we found the judge in Lash's office. I wouldn't put it past the old scallywag. Is anything wrong? Hey, Adam. Hey, take a look at what happened to that little boy you found. Well. <laughs> hey, you sure look pretty. Thank you know, you. I don't understand how I made such a big mistake. <laughs> yeah, that Hop Singh's a pretty good outfitter. Oh, he bought a lot more than I need. I don't know how to thank all of you. Well. Somebody come here. Ride up on a mule. That's all we need. Another scientific expedition. Rosemary, let's find out who this is. Newspaper reporter. Afternoon. We, uh, we printed the retraction about the wild man. So we noticed. Uh, would you care to meet him? <laughs> well, wouldn't that be a little hard to do? After all, it was uh, just something I sort of dreamed up. Well, Mr. Clemens, I think you should be given the opportunity of meeting the wild man. There she is. You mean she's... Uh... That's right, Mr. Clemens. There's your wild man. 20 foot tall with a manzanita bush in each hand and a wagon dog in her mouth. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know what they're talking about, miss, but you're the prettiest wild man I ever did see. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Clemens, to what do we owe this visit? Well, for one thing, I thought you ought to know there are warrants out for your arrest. Warrants? Well, I, uh, I think we ought to talk about this inside. Uh, Rosemary, tell Hopsing we'll have a guest for dinner. Yeah, I'll take him you. Thanks. Come on. Mr. Clemens, I homesteaded the Ponderosa, fought Indians and drove off outlaws. I'm not going to let Lash or anybody else grab my land. Well, if the railroad got a legal right away and checkerboarded the Ponderosa with land holdings, what would you do then? Fight. We've got guns, ammunition, and friends. You can't fight the law with guns. I don't think you have the proper respect for guns, Mr. Clemens. But you'd be surprised how many people have. Oh, I got a lot of respect for guns. Good balance. The thing is that sometimes you get right smack dab into a fight that you can't settle with guns. Or with uh, fists. <clears throat> That's right. 
Now, if our hunch is correct, everything depends on defeating Billington in the election so he won't sell out to the railroad. Looks to me like we ought to get started then before the election. <laughs> you can't defeat a politician with guns, but you might be able to with laughter. You mean laugh him out of town? Something like that. Sometimes the pen is mightier than the sword. Well, I don't know, Mr. Clemens. I think I'd have to put my money on the sword. Yeah, as up against that crowd, I, I think I'd count on my guns. Oh, wait a minute, boys. Sam, if you want to fight this thing out with your pen, well, that's up to you. But we'll be around with our guns to help you, if you need us. Fair enough. And I sure would like to know how you're going to go about it. Just keep reading the Territorial Enterprise. <laughs> a personal pronoun runs for office in Virginia City by Josh. And Jeremy C. Billington, friend of the miner, the mill worker, and the back alley dog, <laughs> spoke at a political rally last night. Most of the speech was devoted to the nobility of Mr. Billington himself. An alarming number of sentences began with the pronoun I, which qualifies the judge as a professor on the subject of personal pronouns. <laughs> During the discourse, it was possible for this reporter to discover that the professor is against sin, gravy on the vest, and overflowing water closets. <laughs> hey, this fellow Josh gets right to the seat of the trouble, don't he? <laughs> I guess our friend Josh knows what he's doing after all. <laughs> Josh claims Professor Personal Pronoun will provide more free air, stronger zephyrs, taller mine mules. He's making a fool of you. That doesn't mean a thing. I'll beat Henry Walker by 3,000 votes. Billington, I've got too big a hand in this game to take chances. No quack newspaper reporter is going to stand between me and the Ponderosa. Bad. Well, you had enough? No, Bill. Billington's got to be beaten for the good of everyone in Virginia City. And I think I might just have the story that'll do it. Sam. Sam! Want to see Judge Billington? I think the judge is retired. That's all right. He's expecting me. from Lasher's office. It's about time. Is it in gold? Yes, it's gold, all right. We had to collect it from one of the gambling places. That's, that's why I was late. Well, let me see it. Let me see it. And there she stood. Nightgown torn right off. Oh! Gold pieces six inches deep around the prettiest bare feet in Virginia City. Oh, I wish I could have seen that. <laughs> uh, money may be the root of all evil, but a lady without a nightgown sure takes the curse off it. Oh, and how? Uh, maybe Mr. Daniel Ash's foreman has a case pending in Professor Personal Pronouns Court. But if he has, we're sure this was just his tribute to feminine beauty. Oh! <laughs> Beating up that reporter didn't stop him from writing more stories. Well, there's one way we can stop him from ever writing another line. That might be better all around. 
He won't amount to much as a writer anyway. I can make sure of that. Get him out of my way. Permanently. My friends! My friends! In this election, do not allow yourselves to be tricked by the special interests. Spearheaded by a libelous newspaper determined to overthrow the will of the common people. If I am elected, we will drive these thieves of liberty out of Virginia City. And once more, every man will be a king and every woman a queen. <laughs> With deuces wild, just <laughs> my friends, my friends. Get up. My friends. Try anything and people get hurt. It's my friends. I believe in fair play. That's my motto. Fair play. What do you charge for it, Billington, huh? <laughs> my friends, my friends, do not believe the lies perpetrated by a man who refuses to sign his own name to his articles, but insists on being called Jock. <laughs> my friends, my friends, listen to me. You've known me all your lives. My oh, friends. Shut up. Your friend's my eye. Let's get out of here. Sam Clemens. He's covering the political rally. Aren't you folks taking a big chance coming into town? Well, apparently not as much of a chance as Sam Clemens. We heard he was beaten up. It didn't stop him. He's still going strong. Yeah, but well, how long can he keep on taking it? It must have been quite a rally. I gotta get the story on the presses. All right, now! Get the story out. Sounds like you started a riot. What happened? Read about it in your next edition. Adam Joe, you next. Go! Knock off fast proof, will you? Hey, Josh, I sure am anxious to read that story. Josh, that's what's wrong. What's wrong? I knew it all along. It just wasn't right. Hey, don't stop writing. Come on, finish it. For sake, Sam, finish the story. As a boy living on the banks of the Mississippi, I used to dream about becoming a river pilot someday. Well, well dream about it some other time. Hurry up with that darn story. Us, watch the back door. Jack, get down! You have to live on the Mississippi to know what it's really like. The way those big old boats come down the river, the leadsmen standing out there on the bow, taking the depth and singing it out to the pilot on the bridge. On a summer evening, it uh, has the sound of music. Music? If you don't get that story finished, the only thing you're gonna hear is a funeral march. I can still hear it. Mark four. 
Mark three. Quarter less three. Half twain. Quarter twain. Mark twain. I've got it. You sure almost did get it, Mr. Clements. No, you don't understand. I mean, I finally found my name. Wait, your name, Samuel Clements? No, Hoss, I mean my pen name, Mark Twain. That means river running clear, two fathoms of water beneath the keel. That's what rivermen call real clear sailing. Everything's pretty clear around here right now, Mr. Clements. I don't know about that name, Mark Twain. Seemed me like I've heard a lot better names than that before. You sure that's a fitting name for a writer? Well, <laughs> I don't know, Hoss. We'll just have to give it a try. You got the finish of that story, Sam? Everything but the byline. Sign it, Mark Twain. Mark Twain? Well, it's better than Josh. Well, what happened to Samuel Clemens? I guess we've seen the last of Sam Clemens. You know something? I like it. Mark Twain. Mark Twain. My business to go out of town. Yeah! There she is, Sam. Out off the press. Professor, personal pronoun won't be around anymore. <laughs> By Mark Twain. Well, it's quite a fight, Sam. Yeah, I guess you were right at that. The pen is mightier than the sword. Anytime you want to visit Virginia City again, you just write us and let us know. And be sure to sign it Mark Twain so we know who it is. Bye, Sam. Bye. I sure will. Bye, Sam. I'll sign it Mark Twain. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. last year. Hey, you hear that, Adam? I think that calls for a celebration. Yeah, you know, I think it's time little Joe took a look inside Julia's palace, huh? Adam, I said a little celebration. <laughs> well, it was a fair fight, at least as fair as it could be, with John Mullane. He's not here too bad. Come on, let's get him over to Doc Martin's. a mad dog. Now, you will not provoke any more violence in my place. Do you understand that? It is amazing to me, my dear Julien, how such tender sentiments can come from trash like you.
welcome to Julia's palace, Mr. Um... Cartwright, Joe Cartwright. Oh, one of the Cartwrights from the Ponderosa? Yes, ma'am. This is a real nice place you've got here. I'm sorry I messed it up. Oh, don't be sorry. After all, you were defending my honor. I've never been here before. Well, you must come back sometime. I'd like that. As my guest. I'm Julia Bulette. I'd, uh, I'd like to repay you. With uh, dinner here at my place. Tomorrow night? Yes, ma'am. Better get the brandy, Tom. We are of the same kind, you and I, Julie. Where men are concerned, we are the messengers of destruction. You do it through the heart, I do it with the gun. Does it matter to you which way it happens to this young man? Hmm? Hey, Paul, you think Julia Bulet might have known my mother? No, I, I don't think that's very likely. Yeah, why not? They both lived in New Orleans. Well, they might just as well have lived on opposite sides of the world. What do you mean? Uh, what I've been trying to say is that... the only thing that Julia Bulette has in common with your mother... the fact that she's a woman. Yeah, she's the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. Yeah, she's a very beautiful woman. Well, come on, Pa. You better hurry up if you want to get to that town meeting on time. Come on. This is a meeting that will be attended by Virginia City's leading citizens. Now, uh, you sure you don't want to come along? I know, thanks, Pa. I, uh, I got some other plans. Miss Pulet? Why so formal, Ben? It used to be Julia. Get up! I'm sorry. Shall Julia. we go in? Well, I... Oh, yes, I've been asked. My invitation said it was supposed to be a meeting of the leading citizens of Virginia City. What did yours say? Well, uh, mine said the same. Shall we proceed? <laughs> like everybody's here that's going to show up, so we might as well get things underway. And I guess we all know why we're here, too. Under the ground of Virginia City lies the greatest bonanza of silver known to man. Most of what's on top, though, is nothing more than trash. The first thing to do is among ourselves, by bringing in effective law and order. Now, starting with effective law and order, We'll have to raise a permanent city fund to interest the kind of men that we want. Ben, can we expect help from the ranchers? Well, ranchers want law and order in town just as much as everybody else. Of course, we'll do all we can, but uh, I don't think that'll be, that'll be enough. Yes, I realize that. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, that brings me to... Uh... That brings you to why I was invited here? The uh, kind of money you'll need will have to come from the people who mostly make up this town. The men who work in the mines. They will listen to Julia Bulette. So, gentlemen, I'll take care of raising the money and uh, the moralizing I'll leave to you. Oh, I know you'd love for me to stay, but... I do have a saloon to run. As well as an appointment to keep. Friends, there's a rumor around that we have a 
a very wicked town here in Virginia City. <laughs> <laughs> so while the blue noses sit up on the hill and cry about it, I think we down here on C Street can do something about it. Here, here. Now, the first thing Virginia City will need will be a little money in its pocket. I'm going to make the first donation. Tom, get me a bottle of brandy. Mm -hmm. A bottle of brandy. Now, how much are you willing to give this fine old Virginia City brandy? $100. $100? This is Julia's Palace, not another saloon. Now, come on, let me hear a respectable bid. All right, $200. Better. $250. $300. $500. Sold. Julia Bulet, $500. Now I'm giving it right back to Virginia City. Who's next? $200. $250? $300. Oh, come on now. $350. $500. <laughs> $100 sold to little Joe Cartwright of Ponderosa. And I give it back to Virginia City, too. <laughs> All right, that starts the open bidding over again. Gladys, come on up here. Make them pay till it hurts. Come on, little Joe. Okay, fellas, what am I bid? Sally, we're gonna need something to put all this money in. Oh, that's gonna be fine, thanks. So, one, two, three, four, five. I, I don't carry that kind of money on me. Can oh. I give you a note for it? No. You saved my honor, I'll save yours. Now we're even. So your daddy forgot to give you your allowance, huh? Look, Mulane, just because you shot up a few miners, that makes you the most feared man in town. I'm not shaking even a little bit, so don't get in my way. You don't think I can make you shake like the others, huh? I think you only stay alive because no grave will have you. I think you'd better go. You were uh, going outside, my friend? Uh, fine. No, he's, he's going with me. Monsieur? Would you rather spend a few minutes with him or an evening with me? Some other time. That is a promise from me. Make yourself comfortable. Fix us a brandy. No, thanks. Oh, you drink so little. Gamble even less. You know, it's a good thing the finer side of a man burns out in his youth, or I'd be out of business. Well, I hope you stay in business a long time. I'd hate to see you leave here. There are not many around here who would agree with you. Well, they snub you on Sunday and come to your place on Monday. The world's better off without that kind of hypocrite. Don't try to change the world, little Joe. Enjoy it the way it is. You'll grow older, and then you'll be no different from all the others. I'm sorry about that. Eh? Oh. Could have had your pick of any man in Virginia City. Why'd you ask me here? John Milan might have killed you. Milan? How'd you happen to make friends with a man like that? It's a long time ago. There's companionship between us. He's not fit to wipe your shoes. Don't be too sure. Julie, just to break up a fight was... Is that the only reason you asked me up here? It was then. Is anything wrong? Mm -hmm. No, quite the contrary. You know, you remind me of what I always pictured my mother would look like. Mm -hmm. She was part French like you, came from New Orleans. And she was a very beautiful woman. <laughs> All right, tell me about New Orleans. <laughs> I'm afraid it wouldn't be as your mother saw it. From different sides, a mountain never looks the same. I don't understand. You will. Goodbye, little Joe. Go home where you belong.
coming back. And now for that little promise, huh? Just relax, Malay. I believe I'd do like he says if I was you. Me and Adam figured you boys would be about ready to settle something. Now, why don't you settle it like gentlemen? A horse will hold your coat. Once I've told him a thousand times to keep those elbows in. Well, Joe's got to learn to fight a lot dirtier than that. A couple of beers, Tom. Kid's got lots of grit. One of these days, he's going to be able to whoop that Frenchman. Yeah, but this wasn't the day. Tom? Bye-bye. Thank you, Tom. We'll see you. All right, Hoss. I told you I'd work it out. Oh, it's not the money, little Joe. I was planning to give more than that to the fund anyway. It's just that I think you're beginning to make a fool of yourself. Why? What's wrong with her? Oh, nothing, nothing. She's a fine woman. All right, what is it then? Well, well it, it, it's, it's just that... Well, she's seen much more of the world than you have, boy. I see. That makes her bad. Well, Doc. <laughs> Good Thank to you. see you. Come Thank on you. in now. What brings you our way? Well, I just come down from the mines at Gold Hill. Oh, how are things down there? Ran into a few cases of fever. Fever? Was it bad? Well, it's hard to say if they'll build up to epidemic proportions. So far, just a few scattered cases here and there. Oh, I'm glad of that. You're looking well, Ben. Feel wonderful. Could have felt better. Good. You've come a long way. This house, Ponderosa, three fine sons, now, Doc, man with all the work you've got to do wouldn't take a long ride just to talk old time. Now, sit down. How about a little refreshment? Well... Hob Singh? How about a little cool water from that good well of yours? All right. Yes, sir, Mr. Conley. Glass of cool water for Dr. Martin. Yes, sir. Lie away. Now then, what's in your mind? Well... For one thing, the committee wanted you to know we received a letter of acceptance from Brad Olins. No, oh, that's fine. Olins is one of the best. Yes. I only hope we can keep him. No. What's to stop us? Well, money for one thing. Oh, Miss Bulette's bottle of brandy got us off to a fine start. But it can't stop there. We've got to have the cooperation of the people. I sure hope we get all the cooperation we need. Ben... You know that most of the people of a community keep in step with the leaders. We're just beginning to find some of our leaders. 
You, for instance, Ben. All right. All right, Doc, keep talking. Well, I just don't know any other way to say it. People of the town are talking about little Joe and Miss Bulette. Now, matters concerning my sons and myself are nobody's business but our own. No longer, Ben. It boils down to this. If Virginia City will keep her house clean, she has a chance to become an important part of this country. If she doesn't, she'll stay just a dirty little town on a mountain. I'll talk to Julia, Doc. Brandy, Ben? I promise you it's the very best. I'm sure it is, Judy, but uh, no thanks. Mm. And finding out the Cartwrights aren't much of a drinking family. No, that's true, but uh, very much a family. Go on. Well, Julia, you know, the boy's young. He's, uh, he's full of life. Well, I can understand how he could appeal to you. It has. You know, with you, this is a, this is a passing thing. It's different for little Joe. Different how? Did he ever tell you about his mother? Yes. He never really knew her. She died when he was, he was very young. Now, you were the only other woman of French ancestry he's ever known. That and the fact that you also come from New Orleans well, makes you something special in his eyes. But not in yours. No, I guess not. Have you told little Joe to stay away from me? No. I prefer him to hear it from you. And just what is it you'd uh, like him to hear from me? Well, the difference in your ages, your ways of life. Not to mention uh, the fact that the whole town is talking about us and what that could do to a young man's reputation. Yes, there's that too. Mm -hmm. I'll think about it, Ben. Julia, you're wonderful. I knew I could count on you. <laughs> you know, this really will be best for you, for everybody. Tom? Bye, Mr. Fairbrand. Tom? Has little Joe Cartwright been around? No, but I passed her word along that she didn't want to see him anymore. I changed my mind. But Miss Julia! I said I changed my mind. Little Joe, well, where have you been? Virginia City. Ran into Doc Martin. And several more cases of fever. He's getting real worried. Oh, Joe, I've been uh, been waiting here to talk to you. Oh, what about? You've been with that woman again. Her name is Miss Bulette. Now, Joe, you're a, you're a grown man, and I I know you'll understand what I'm going to say to you. I know already. Oh, she's not the kind of woman that people say she is. Not anymore, anyway. Well, look, I know she, she wears fine clothes, and she talks good, and she lives well, but, you know, a, a scar doesn't disappear just because you wash it. I guess that's how it was with my mother. Keep your mother out of this. I've heard you and Adam talk how there were places you couldn't go, things you couldn't do because... Because she was part Creole. It was a language and the ways of a people that some folks didn't understand. Nothing more. I know that. And still, there were a lot of people that hated her. Well, sometimes I see a scar, you know, you're gonna be looking for it. Little Joe, I... No. 
I'll take the help thing. I don't want no more. Only one piece cake? This dang cake's flat. The cake is not flat. For two days now, whole lens is flat. No fun, nobody eat, no good without little Joe. I just talked to Charlie. He's been in town. Seems the kid's having himself quite a time with Miss Bulette. They've been seen just about everywhere. You must be enjoying this. You know, it's doing something for little Joe. Defending somebody he feels close to. He'll get over it. You think so? Well, let him find somebody else to defend. I'm not gonna have that woman beating me over the head with my own son. And we're gonna bring little Joe back from town if we have to drag him every step of the way. Protecting my boy when the whole mob is trying to take him apart? Well, what that mob was doing to your boy is nothing compared to what he did to the inside of my opera house. He wrecked it. Take a whole week to put it back together again, and it was nothing but uncalled for violence. Uncalled for? What do you call what you did to Miss Boulette? Now, wait a minute. What's all this about? Perhaps I can explain. I have a box loge in this theater. Mr. Romley had it draped so it would be separated from the others. A new policy of the management. I accepted it, but my escort didn't. Well, with the district judge and, and the new marshal coming in a couple of weeks, the, the committee... Ben, you know what I mean. Let's go. Let me know how much the damages will be. You're coming home with us. You can make me go home, but you can't make me stay there. All I want is a chance to decide a few things for myself. I'll get the carriage. Now, why do you have to fight me and the town using a boy as a weapon? It's the only weapon I can use against you and win. <laughs> it's quite a victory, isn't it? Ben Cartwright's son, Defending the honor of Julie Bullet. It's even more of a victory. I have the help of his father. Ben! Oh, Ben! The fever's not an isolated thing any longer. It's all over Gold Hill. And it is an epidemic. We'll be in Virginia City by morning. Chances are it's the water. There's plenty of pure water in the Ponderosa. Adam Hoss, get the hands together in the ranch and get some water down here. Yes, sir. All right now, folks, I'll need all the help I can get. Beds for the patients, men to transport them, and women to tend them. What I need is good water, shelter, and volunteers. Now, who'll be next? The palace will be set up for anything you need right away. Well, thank you, Julie. All right, who else? Ye shall keep all my statutes, so the land shall not spew you out. Well, the Lord was talking to Moses, not to Virginia City. He taught me that that meant everyone. So what's happened to the good people in this town? They're about to go to work, little Joe. Julia, don't bother moving those gambling tables. They'll do nicely as beds. All right, Doctor. Thank you. It's going to slosh around a little bit, but that'll have to do. Take her on down and fill her up with water and take her on into town. As soon as it's empty, bring it back. Get it.
No, no, Hobson. Let me show you. Here. It's easy when you know how. You watch me and I'll show you how to load barrels. You can't use your back strength and your muscles. You gotta use your head, Hobson. That's right. You use a your head your way, I use a my head my way. Yeah. up enough strength to take this medicine and I'll uh, let you take advantage of my good nature. <laughs> well, we're saving two for everyone we're losing. In an epidemic like this, that's a victory. Well, those that are healthy are beginning to leave this town in droves. It's a dirty little town on a mountain. I guess that's all we were meant to be. But if to change it means crucifying people like her, I say it's not worth it. Hey, Doc, I got you three more volunteers. Oh, good. Oh, Pete, I thought you and your crew were pulling out. Well, maybe it's like little Joe says, Doc. It's our mountain. We dug right under insides with a little more than our bare hands. Well, it... It ain't decent to let some stinking thing like a fever chase us off. Mr. Cartwright there can show you plenty to do. You come with me, Pete. Joe? I've got something for you to do. Take a break. No, Doc, there's still a lot of work to be done. That goes for Julia, too. You two have been working for days. I need help, not new patients. You do as you're told. We've been asleep a long time. Yeah, I dreamt I was in New Orleans. Yeah, it was a beautiful place. Virginia said he's a long way from New Orleans. I'm gonna go there someday. Maybe to live. This is where you'll stay. No, a man goes where he wants to be. I've watched the way you handle people here. Man stays where he's needed. And you? When a town starts to grow, I look for a new frontier. It doesn't have to be this way. I get. Your mother was French. Do you understand the language? Some of it. Cela aurait dû arriver il y a des années. It should have happened many years ago. Mm -hmm. Someday you'll know what I mean. You'll also know why you must stay and I must go. We'll be needed inside. You know, I think you're gonna make it. Well, well I checked most of the mines. And there's not one new case of fever, Doc. More than half the men have gone back to work. Ah, good. Then we'll move the last of our patients over to the meeting house. <laughs> Boys, let's move these blankets and beds over to the meeting house. Well, it was a fight, Adam, but it's the kind of fight that's good to win. Well, we uh, lost one, too, Pa. Well, what do you mean? Uh, little Joe came back to the ranch this morning and he took his things. <laughs>
Now that uh, this is over, uh, Julia, this, uh, this thing with little Joe, I should never have interfered. Oh, I'm disappointed in you, Ben. Disappointed? A man of strength should never let sentiment interfere with his convictions. I'm the same woman I was before the fever. Well, I haven't changed either. And nothing has changed between us, but I... I won't gamble with something I can't replace. If it's Little Joe's wish, you're welcome to become part of the Ponderosa. That's quite an offer. Especially since you don't think I'm good enough for him. Whether or not you're good enough for Little Joe is, is something only you can decide. some champagne. Harry, let me have a tune, a lovely one. As soon as the patients are moved, I want you to clear out this mess and put the gambling tables back in their places. I'm going to put on a night Virginia City will never forget. Well, after the fever, that should be a great celebration. Celebration? Who said anything about a celebration? This is going to be an execution. Julia Bulett. Destroying the sweet innocence of youth. With me. I'm having fun. You call this fun? You're acting like a. Go ahead, little Joe. Say it. Mr. Cartwright, I think I've told you to stay away from Julia Villette. It has been a short life for you, my friend. Let us hope it has been a pleasant one. John. Listen. I listen. I listen about this important thing I must do for you in Sacramento City. And I discover it is something which could have been handled by mail. John, please, don't, John! Julia, you all right? It isn't a bad one, more, Sherry. Go upstairs. I'll, I'll fix it. Julia? Leave me alone. Julia, I did this for you. You want to do something for me? This bracelet, the necklace, they arrived today. A present from an old friend. They're diamonds, little Joe. That's all any man can do for me. No, you don't mean that. Why shouldn't I? That door you came through, it works both ways. I think you'd better use it. Yes, Julie. You destroy with a heart. Hmm? I used to wonder why it was I'd send you away and then be so happy when you came back. Perhaps that is because we are cut from the same piece of cloth. Perhaps it's because in order to hate you, I had to hate myself. As you said, we're very much alike. One cannot change this, Julie. One can try. 
I don't want to see you anymore, John. <laughs> you have said this before. I never meant it before. We have been together too long, Julie. We have no escape one from the other. Goodbye, John. Julie. I have little which belongs to me. But what I have, no one will take away. No one. You shouldn't have taken on Malene alone. Well, I beat him, didn't I? Little Joe, they, they're having the fanciest meeting you ever seen over at the community hall. Everybody's patting each other on the back for stopping that epidemic. Paul's right up there on stage with him. He's going to make a speech. Now, you wouldn't want to miss Paul making a speech, would you? Everybody's patting everybody on the back, huh? Well, it's a real fine meeting. Come on, Joe. Well, you know, you're right. I wouldn't want to miss it. As nobody, Virginia City has a right to thank more than Ben Cartwright. Thank you, Mr. Romney. If we've done anything... Yes, sir, you... boy. Thank you, Mr. Romney. Oh, and thanks to you, too, Doc Martin. And I want to give a special thanks to all you honorable citizens. But how about giving a little thanks to the person who did the most to save this stinking town? How about some thanks for Julia Bulette? Oh, what's the matter? Don't you have the guts to admit when you're wrong? Well, Virginia City's fire engine company's been needing an honorary member. How about it, boys? Well, the lady isn't going to know anything about it until we tell her. Come on! Joe, it, it was you who got us here, so you ought to be the one to say it. Well, this isn't just for what you did for Virginia City during the epidemic. Well, it's for all the things you've done for everyone in this town. That's right. It's not a diamond necklace or a, or a bottle of champagne, but it's the best we've got. What do you say, boys? Three cheers for the first honorary member of Virginia City's Fire Engine Company number two. Hip 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 There's no diamond necklace that goes with this either, but I'd be especially proud if you'd consent to be my wife. What Miss Bulette is trying to say is, champagne on the house. Let's get out. Come on. Having faith in no one carries a special kind of security. You and your son have destroyed it. I'll never forgive you that, Ben. Cartwright, this is Brad Olin. Howdy. Well, howdy. Nice to meet you. You got in with a new judge, so we swore him in right away. Well, there's some nice things about you. Nice to have you with us. There's my son, Joseph. How do you do? How are you? You're uh, about a week early, aren't you? 
Well, a week early, but a day late. Oh? <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? Julia Bulette was knifed and robbed last night. How is she? It's bad. Doc Martin's with her. A couple of miners saw a tall, dark man coming out of her place just about daybreak. John Mullane. Oh, that's the name. We followed him up this way. He's probably headed for Lakes Crossing. Me and Adam will show you the way. Oh, that's fine. Oh, we'd better get going. Oh, Joe. Miss Bulette sent word she'd like to see you and your dad. Ben. You've been asleep a long time. Looks like I win a battle and lose the war. I'm sorry. Everyone is. Everyone? <laughs> if New Orleans could only see me now, huh? Little Joe. He's here. I want to see him, Ben. Ben? Last night, you and the rest of Virginia City gave me a present. Now it's my turn. I'm going to give you back your son. Get me some brandy, Joe. I shouldn't be giving this to you. No. Oh, this is the way I live, kid. Are <laughs> oh, you gonna be all right? I don't care. Couldn't have happened at a better time if I'd lived to be a thousand. <laughs> we beat him, Joe. We beat the apple knockers. What? <laughs> the high and mighty blue noses. We took them for the ride of their lives. <laughs> that play of yours. Bringing them in to lick my shoes just when they were ripe. <laughs> They meant every word of that. Sure they meant it. It makes it so rich. <laughs> they'll, <laughs> they'll hear me laugh, laughing every time they pass my gra grave. <laughs> the biggest laugh of all, <laughs> your old man. That night you were up here, I told you it was just for laughs, remember? I never intended to see you again. I never wanted to see you again. <laughs> you... <laughs> oh. you better go, Joe. The doctor wants me to rest. Coming back. Well, we got Malane. He had our diamonds in his saddlebags.
Man, that's sweet. Just him you ought to be marrying. Quit nipping on that jog you have hid in the mattress. That's a fine way to be talking to poor old father. We were speaking to the sweet. Like as not, he's starving to death out there in the wilds of Nevada. Bonanza! Glory <laughs> be to the sweet! But the son of the heathen land has touched him. He's speaking in tongues. Annie, I struck it rich out there in Nevada. <laughs> Ellie, I'm a rich man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, ah, there was good stew. Yeah. You miserable stew eating Swede, you. If only I didn't love you so. Come. <laughs> <laughs> and I staked out two claims. Not one, but two. <laughs> oh, Swede, you, me, and himself in the land of Nevada, breathing the fine air. And uh, no, tis the air of San Francisco I'm used to breathing these many years. Squall. <laughs> I, I, I'll tell you what we'll do. You two go on and get the silver and gold and bring it back here to me. And have you drink it up faster than we can to get from the ground. We all go. Well, I tell you both, none of us got to go. I'm going to sell the claims right here in San Francisco. Sell them? Whatever for? Well, I tell you the truth, Danny. After six months of eating that dry, miserable grub, I'm sick and tired of Nevada. Well, I ain't. And one of these claims is mine, sweet Lundberg, for I grub staked you. And don't you forget it. You go ahead. Trade yours for a bottle of whiskey as you'll like us not do. But himself and me is heading for Nevada. Oh, no, me darling. Tis here I belong with a good salt air in me lungs. And the whiskey in your insides. The both of yous, we go to Nevada. Now you mark me. Mark me well, Annie O'Toole. One whiff of that heathen air and I'll die. We're not letting this get away from us. <laughs> Sure stabilize that one, Paul. Hey, Paul. What is it? 
dead man. Who is it, miss? It's himself. Himself? Me sainted father, Kevin O'Toole. Are you, uh, are you able to tell us about it? Cooking breakfast I was this morning on me mother's stove. Himself was a great one for hot cakes. He strangled and died. From the hot cakes, ma'am? Do you question my cooking? The hot cakes, he says. Twas the air that choked him, just as he said it would. Annie, he says to me, one whiff of that heathen air and I'll die. He said it and he did it. Thank you, I'm all right. He wouldn't want me grieving. As a matter of fact, I'm proud of him. Proud of him? Why not? It's the first time in his life himself ever did exactly what he said he'd do. Well, we're all dreadfully sorry, miss. Uh, if we could offer you the hospitality of our ranch until you return home. Why, don't you talk grand, though? Oh, thank you, I'll be staying here. Here in Washoe Diggins? Half a minute. You know a man named Sweet Lundberg? Know him? Many's the time I've knocked the corners from his head with a skillet. I know him. Now, will someone guide me? All right. Uh, no, maybe you better go with a horse. Uh, this is my brother, Miss O'Toole. He'll see that uh, no harm comes to you. My, ain't you the big one, though? <laughs> Thank you. Uh... Oh, won't there? That woodpecker of a Simpson jumped my claim. Now, stop it now. Oh, in the absence of formal law, you still have your minor law. But who's to enforce it or decide on it? Uh, appoint yourselves a referee. Or if you have a serious dispute, hold a minor's court. I'll hold with that. But there ain't anybody around here I could trust, except Ben Cartwright himself. Yes! Yeah! Yeah! Oh, thank you, fellas. Thank you, Clayton. But I'm afraid my time is fully occupied. Well, we'll vote on it. All those in favor of Ben Cartwright acting as a dispute referee, speak up. Oh, well, if you feel that I can help settle your current disputes, uh, but remember, it's only a temporary arrangement until you find somebody permanent. All right. Looks like you got yourself a job, Pa. <laughs> So have you, younger brother. You get yourself back to the ranch and see all the boys are doing with the cattle branded. And just what'll you be doing? Well, I'm going to get that girl out of town before we get into a dispute that even Pa can't settle. Best I could do, ma'am. Thank you. Oh, it's a fine view. Himself will like it once he gets used to it. Yes, sir. Oh, all this hard work in the heat of the day. You poor man, you must be starved. Well, I can always eat, ma'am. If it ain't no bother. Oh, on that stove a bother? Why, it's like a friend to me. It's one thing I understand complete. Thank you. Well, Hoss, looks like you took care of things. I had to put him someplace, Adam. Well, uh, I guess it really doesn't matter. Well, now, Mr. High and Mighty, it matters a lot to me. I really meant no disrespect, miss. It's just that, well, we hadn't fully checked your claim. You see, Sweet Lundberg had two claims. And this is one of them. And it's here I am and here I stay. Miss O'Toole, I assure you, my only concern is for your welfare. True that one again. What? Speak plain to the point. Then I'll do exactly that. You're the only woman in this camp. These are rough men. Oh, and it's milksops I'm used to on the Barbary Coast, is it? All I'm saying is it's no place for a nice, charming lady. Well, oh, now, thank you very much for the compliment. But don't you worry about me. I can cut the whiskers from a cat with a skillet. 
without even disturbing its slumber. Now, you were saying... I was saying that I want you to get out of here and go back to San Francisco. And leave himself alone in a heathen place? Why, there hasn't been a day of my life I haven't taken care of him. It's here I stay. Ma'am, my brother Adam always knows what's best. Oh, I suppose I have no choice. There's bare enough food in the wagon to last the day. And there you stand, you poor man, starving in your tracks while I babble on. Here we go now. Thank you very much. Now, Miss O'Toole, if it's money you need. And who don't? Well, I'd be glad to give you enough money to get you back to San Francisco. Mr. Adam, I'll have you know, I don't take money from no strangers. The shame of you talking like that in front of himself. I only meant... I've got an idea what you meant. And you'd best be learning some manners from your big brother here. Now you take yourself out the way you came in. I promised your brother Mulligan, and Mulligan he shall have. Oh, himself loved me Mulligan almost as well as he loved his bottle. <laughs> Woman talking, that's what it is. Woman talking, come on. starving dears. Listen, if you'll all pitch in together and get me a big pot and some spuds and onions. Onions? Miss, if there was an onion in this camp, it could be traded for the richest claim on the washhoe. Salt pork is all you'll find around here. Miss O'Toole, uh, if you won't accept money from me... You trying something with this lady? But he ain't getting no place with it. I'm only trying to help her. I told you, I don't take money from no strangers. Who's offering you money? <clears throat> now, I was watching these men and uh, their interest in your uh, culinary arts. Watch your tongue. Would you feed them for, say, uh, a dollar a meal? At a dollar and a half, I would. Ah. But where am I going to get enough food for all these hungry mouths? Well, now, that's what I'm telling you. Now, I have plenty of supplies on the Ponderosa. Now, I could give you enough to cook one big meal for the whole camp. And on the proceeds, you could return to San Francisco. What sort of supplies? Oh, ham, uh, fresh eggs, beef. <laughs> oh, how can I turn them down, the poor starving dears? Then it's a deal. <gasps> on one condition. What? That you come in as my partner. Oh, now, that won't be necessary. Then the deal's off. Oh, oh all right. <laughs> oh, a lovely thing it is. Adam, you're a darling man. And to think I took you for a snibberblot. A what? A snibberblot. It was a saying himself had for the nabobs that lived on the hill and looked down their noses at us on the Barbary coast. I mean no offense, it's just your grand manner. But Adam, you have a heart and I could kiss you for it. <laughs> uh, we'll need a name for the place, a uh, menu with uh, prices. you want me to round up the cows. Then I get word you want me to empty the storehouse and bring everything here. Oh, will you make up your mind? Well, you just get on back to the cows. This is all you'll be hauling. Now, <laughs> uh, just what's this all about? Miss Annie said that two wagon loads would be better than one. I know told you to take orders from Annie. Ain't she your partner? Uh, for this one load, for one batch of meals, and then back she goes to San Francisco. Now, Adam, the men are pretty excited about the eating place they got here, and, and they ain't gonna like it much if you close it up before it even gets open. Well, I don't care whether they like it or not. 
But one easy way to solve all this is to let older brother do all the cooking himself. There's one thing I want straight around here. We're going to raise enough money to get you back to San Francisco, and that's it. No more. Is that clear? Yes, Adam. Then where in thunderation do you get off and tell an horse to bring a second load of goods? And where do you get off telling me how much supplies it takes to feed a hundred men? A hundred men? They're coming down from the hills a dozen at a time. Well, this is all. Understand? Absolutely all. Well, where's the bill of fare? Adam, I can't write. There you are. A sniver blot, and I knew it. It ain't like I didn't want to have learning. So don't stand there and look down your nose at me. Annie, I wasn't criticizing you. You was, too. You, you with your fine words and your grand airs. Oh, really, what difference does it make? Now, just by luck, I happen to know how to write. We're partners, aren't we? Mm-hmm. All right. Now, what's the name of our grand establishment? The Square Meal, that's what they all say. You know, I could have learned to write if I'd had a chance. Of course you could. Yeah, well, how do you like that? My, ain't it grand and scrawly. <laughs> Adam, could you learn me to write it out like that? Sure, I could. Now for the bill of fare. Let's see, um, ham and eggs and potatoes, a uh, dollar. A, a dollar and a half. Uh, uh, I ought to learn numbers first. Adam, could you learn me numbers? Sure, I could. Dollar and a half? Uh, make it two dollars. Uh, a dollar and a half for Mulligan by the plate. Being in business, it's good for me to know numbers. Adam, could you really learn me to write numbers? Could I teach you? I don't know, could you? Oh, uh, two dollars for the stew. Well, the supplies are all unloaded, Mr. Delmonico. Oh, himself will be so proud of me, being in business with such fine gentlemen. Uh, Adam, we're running out of wood. Will you cut some? Oh, I guess Annie doesn't know how scarce wood is around here. I brought some from the Ponderosa right here in the wagon. Start cutting it. Adam! Yeah? Look, in spite of me ways, there's a heart in me. Uh, I mean himself. But you see, he wouldn't want me grieving. Oh, Adam, you're a good, kind man. I'm doing no more than anyone else would do, Annie. But you are, offering to learn me figures and how to write and all that and to speak like a real lady. <laughs> you and me is going to make a million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> you and I. That's right, darling, the both of us. <laughs> The Square Meal restaurant was a howling success. And by the end of the first week, Annie O'Toole had enough money to take her back to San Francisco in style. But Annie showed no inclination to leave. And I discovered that although she couldn't write writin, as she put it, she did have quite an eye for business. Now. No, 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 Annie. I don't want any of the money because if you take the money, I gotta get you back to San Francisco. Now listen to me, start. Adam. Oh. You're gonna. I tried my best to get out of that partnership with Annie, but Annie wouldn't hear of it. My darling. Pa too had gotten in a lot deeper than he had planned. I decided it was time for all of us to get out of here and get back to Ponderosa where we belong. Wishimala, you know like a half sink cooking? You like a Missy Annie O2. All right, I quit. Now simmer down, half sink, will you? Have enough trouble with that woman as it is. Why don't you marry her, Adam? Save us all this trouble. Huh. You know, if she doesn't stop grub staking every miner that comes along, she'll wind up owning half the Comstock. Hey, you know, you're making more money by accident than most men make on purpose, you know. I tell you, I'm not her partner. No, well, don't tell me, tell her. Of course, you can sure cook. Hmm? You go her house, eat. You know, like a half scene cooking. Nah, wait a minute, half scene. That isn't what I meant. That ain't what I meant. Hmm? 
Mr. Cartwright, I can talk to you. Sweet, when'd you get back? Come on in. Well, I've been back a couple of days. Sit down. Oh, thank you. Oh, am I glad to see you. We have a mutual friend in town, Annie O'Toole. Well, this here is what I come to talk about. They tell me you settled all the complaints, Mr. Cartwright. Oh, just trying to establish some degree of order. Now, what's wrong, sweet? Well, you see, when I left here, I staked out two claims. And the one I give to Annie and the other I sell in San Francisco. Well, what's the difficulty? Well, I don't know which one I give to Annie or which one I sell. <laughs> well, that should be simple enough. Annie has her claim, and I assume the man you sold to has his. Adam, have you ever tried to reason with Annie O'Toole? Well, I guess we ought to look into it, Pa. All right. Well, Miss Cartwright, it seems clear enough, doesn't it? I'm obviously the legal owner of the sweet lumber claim number two. Yes, it would seem so, Mr. Spain. And by simple process of elimination, Annie O'Toole must own sweet lumber claim number one. Yes. Then I insist you throw her off my property. Mr. Spain, we're not here to throw people out. We're here to settle disputes. Maybe we talk to Annie about this. Oh, so it's you again, is it? Uh, now, Annie, we, uh, we just want to get this thing straightened out. Uh, Mr. Spain here is... Uh... Oh, Mr. Spain, is it? Ain't we grand since we moved to Knob Hill? Mr. Gregory Spain. Trapdoor Gregory he was when I knew him. Let's stick to the facts. The fact, the fact you'll have. The biggest thug and Shanghai artist on the Barbary Coast he was. Mr. Trapdoor Gregory. Must I listen to this witch? You be careful what you call her. And ain't you the fine one, trading your claim to this scum here for a bottle of whiskey? And it wasn't a bottle, it was a keg. And, well, it was for himself. It, Sort of awake it was. Oh, awake was it? Why, you didn't even know himself had passed to his reward. All very interesting. Get them out of here. I'll get a crew in here, tear down this restaurant. The grave has to be moved, of course. You sniverblot! You miserable no, little no, sniverblot! No, no, Putting no, on airs with me! I knew you when you was no, picking pockets off drunks and the gutters, I did. I, no. And didn't himself go to work for you when you first got into the Shanghai business. Springing the trap doors, he did. Under the bar stools. The best trap door springer you ever had. You said so yourself. Yeah, he was and right. did he ever come yeah, home with a dollar in his jeans? No, he no, didn't. You paid him his way Wages and whiskey, you yeah, dare! No, 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 keep, keep, keep her away from me. Ha! Ah, he ain't even worth denting me pan on. Sweet, is this claim number two? Or ain't it? Well, I, I think so. I, I just don't remember. You don't remember? Well, I, I was sort of excited. You was drunk, that's what you was. Annie, get your claim notice. Now, this is claim number two, and your notice says claim number one, then I'm afraid you're on the wrong property. Oh, Adam, don't let him move himself from his resting place. Annie, we may have to. I won't do it! Please. Annie, get your claim notice. <laughs> Claim number two, you say. You read it, Adam. You know how poor I am at reading. Spain, let me see your claim, please. Mm -hmm. They're both for claim number two. What? You altered yours. It's a forgery. I'll throw you out of here and himself along with you. No, 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 no. This can all be settled, but not in this manner. Come well, along, Mr. Spade. Oh, oh. Annie, this will get you no place. Gregory Spain, snibberblot, thief, crook. 
That's what he is, accusing me. Annie, one of these claim numbers has been altered. Oh, Adam, I just don't understand business. Annie, did you change your claim number? No, how could I do it? Now, the claims are done with Roman numerals. I don't know nothing about it. I never met a Roman in my life. Annie, is that what you did? Adam, you know I can't write. Oh, all right, forget it. Pa and I will straighten it out. <laughs> You worry about it, darling. For ten years, I've been waiting to get trapdoor Gregory in me clutches. The way he done you out of your wages. And you, the best trapdoor Springer he ever had. Don't you worry about it. They won't be disturbing your rest. Not unless that trapdoor Gregory pays for it, they won't. I demand my rights. All right. A sweet, surely there must be some way you can remember. Which stake did you claim out first? That would be claim number one, wouldn't it? I just don't remember. No, that wasn't it. I think I got it. I think I know. I left my tools on claim number two. Uh, I my pick, my shovel, and, and then I got excited. You got drunk. Then wherever we find the tools, that's claim number two. And that's my claim. Can you identify the tools? Well, yeah, sure. I, I got the first letters of my name burned in the handles. Will that satisfy you, Annie? Oh, sure, sure, Adam. Oh, I, I, I only want to do what's fair. Well, I'd best be getting back to the restaurant. Sure. All right, all right, all right. Now, quiet for a minute. That's what we'll do. You'll go down to the claim and take a look. And if the tools are there, that'll be claim number two. Agreed? Agreed. All right. I sure hope those tools aren't on Annie's claim. This Spain's a crook if I ever saw one. There's some tools over there, all right. I used a pick and a shovel when I dug that grave. I was afraid of that. All right, let's get at it. <laughs> no, 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 listen, darlings, listen. You can't go looking for tools on empty stomachs. Give me one minute and I'll get the mulligan pot going. <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't come here to eat. We came here to see justice. Sit down. <laughs> You'll get what's coming to you. I wish you would. All right, Annie, bring on the food. We're all for you. <laughs> I ain't hungry. <laughs> Annie, uh, you promise you will abide by our decision. Oh, yes, I will, Adam. But that trap door makes me mad, strutting around like a peacock. Just because he's moved on to Knob Hill, he thinks he's a big typhoon. Tycoon. A typhoon is a big win. That's him. <laughs> Just don't understand it. I know there was a pick and shovel back there. She stole them, I tell you. That's what she did. She's trying to do me out of what's mine. Oh, quit whining, will you? We looked, didn't we? What's the matter, Mr. Spain? You got that other claim. Why don't you go on over there and take it? I ain't through with you yet, Annie O'Toole. I'll have what's mine. Why don't you go spring a trap door? <laughs> Come on, little Joe. Goodbye, ma'am. Annie, I don't know what your game is. There you go, suspecting me. And me figuring the only man I could count on were you. Was you. Well, you wasn't. Oh, Adam. I've known Trapped almost all me life. 
A cutthroat. Thief. That's what he is. Oh, I can believe that. And that's why I hate to see you antagonize him. Now, look, Swede's other claim is near here. Why not? Why don't we get the men and just move the restaurant? But what about himself? There'd be no need to disturb the grave. And have him know that trapdoor was tramping all over him? Oh, himself would be turning end for end. He'd be that upset. Oh, now, Adam, why do you doubt me? You seen me claim notice today, didn't you? Didn't it have the right number? And did they find the Swedes pick and axe and shovel? No, I ask you, did they? There's such a shortage of wood around here. Sure there is. Spain's getting himself a crew. Yeah, he's been at it for the last hour. Must have talked to 10 or 12 men. Yeah, he sure knows how to pick the tough ones, too. Uh, maybe they've decided to work claim uh, number one. I doubt it. Why do they just trade claims? After all, one's just about like another. And besides, Annie has a father buried over there. Isn't anything sacred around here? Not where Silver is concerned. It would seem that Mr. Kevin himself, O'Toole, is buried atop the richest strike ever made in the Washington. Keeping the news of the big strike quiet is about as easy as hiding an elephant under a walnut shell. Everyone wanted in on it. From the looks of it, Annie was getting her share of the bonanza, too. <laughs> Go ahead with your eating, gentlemen. You won't disturb us one bit. Now, look, Spain, if you think you can run Annie off her claim... Her claim, Mr. Cartwright. Sweet. Will you show me just where you dug your shaft when you made your required improvements? 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 I guess I didn't make none. I just knocked a hunk of assay rock off the ledge. That's right, sweet. You didn't make any improvements. And according to Miner's Law, in which you Cartwrights put such great stock, if the improvements are not made within 10 days, the claim is considered abandoned. And also, according to that same Miner's Law, it would be perfectly legal for me to shoot any man who tried to jump my claim. Get to work, gentlemen. Adam, can't you stop them? They're busting up the place. An experimental hole, gentlemen. It's only a very small charge of powder, but perhaps you should stand back.
It's only fool's luck that someone wasn't killed. And unless this thing is settled, someone will be. It's already settled. That's my claim, and she's on it, and I mean to throw her off. Uh, no. No. Quiet! Quiet, all of you! All of you! Now, we had some semblance of law and order started here. Let's don't lose it. Now, the way I see it, the only way to settle this is to hold a minor's court. Hear all the evidence. Everyone in camp acts as jury. I'll give you his evidence. Trapdoor Gregory is a pickpocket what made good, and that's all he is. It's O'Toole. I wouldn't take his word for the time of day. Annie, will you please be quiet? And, Pa, I think the minor's court's the right thing to do. You have no right to think. But, but Pa, it's me, Adam. Well, as far as I'm concerned, young man, you are the partner of the defendant. And if you say one more word to me before the trial, I'll fine you for trying to influence the referee. <laughs> Adam, we have enough money. Let's buy us another judge. Annie. I was only trying to help. But will you stop trying to help before you land the both of us in jail? Mr. Spain, how about you? Do you agree to the minor's court? Plaintiff agrees. Miss O'Toole? I think you're a sniveller. <sighs> Miss O'Toole agrees. All right. Now you have a half hour to prepare your cases. <laughs> Annie, I may as well tell you right out. I don't think you have any legal right to this claim. Well, Adam, I wasn't thinking of legal rights. I was just trying to think about human rights. You know, I'm human, same as anybody else. Of course you are, Annie. Oh, I don't mean to complain, Adam. But all these years, I've worked hard, dreaming of one thing, that someday I'd get to live like a lady. Annie, why didn't you get married? Oh, I wanted to. But nobody ever asked me. Adam, you won't walk out on me now, will you? Don't you worry. I'm not going to walk out on you. Because I wouldn't know what to say at the trial. Your pa, as good a man as he is, terrifies me with his ways. I'll speak for you. You will. You darling, you. <laughs> well, I got word you wanted to see me. Is there any charge for this hair show? Well, sweet, I, I just wanted to talk to you. Yeah, sure. As soon as you get through lollygagging and kissing around, yeah? Well, now, sweet, listen. Now. Just a minute, sweet Lundberg. Don't you get snibberblot with me. Me snibberblot? Well, how about you? You and your talk about marriage all the time. In the fine house, and you're going to make a fine gentleman out of me. Well, sweet, listen. Now. And a sorry task it would be. Well, don't you bother. You found a fine gentleman, a real fine one. Indeed, I did find a fine one. Well, then why don't you marry him? That's what you wanted. Sweet. Go ahead, see if I care. Sweet, but listen. I... Sweet. Now, sweet, listen. I ought to punch you right in the nose. Things look bad for Annie, Adam. We've been keeping an eye on Spain. He's been buying liquor and bribing every drunk in town. There's more of those than there are the others. Looks like you got yourself a paid-off jury, older brother. Court will come to order. Take off your hats. Mr. Gregory Spain. Your hat. My case is simple, and I throw myself entirely on the mercy of these honest men and the honorable judge. I make no claims. I ask only that the law of abandonment be upheld. The assessment work ain't been done on the claim in question. He's right. He's right. That's all I got to say. Hat. 
Miss Annie O'Toole. As one of the partners of Cartwright and O'Toole, I'll present our case. Now, the whole point here seems to be that uh, no assessment work was done. Well, I submit it was. May I call a witness, uh, Your Honor? Thank you. Uh, Horse Cartwright. Now, Horst, did you or did you not dig an exploration shaft on the disputed claim the very first day Miss O'Toole came to Virginia City? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I dug a hole. It's a... Uh, just answer the question. Yes, sir. I dug a hole six foot deep, six feet long, and three foot wide. Gentlemen, that satisfies the requirement. And there's not a thing in Miner's Law that says you can't bury a body in an exploration shaft and then fill it back up again. Gentlemen, I ask that you rule in favor of Miss Annie O'Toole. The assessment work was done. Yeah! Oh, that's a court! Court's adjourned. You're a thief and a crook. It takes one to recognize one. I can't fight the whole camp. I know I'm buying my own claim, but I'll give you $5,000 in cash. Trap door. You think I disturb himself from his resting place for money. I wouldn't dream of it. At least not for that amount. Hey, you will excuse us. Think of him sleeping there, right on top of a million dollars and not making a move to do anything about it. And him who never before had a dime in his jeans. Annie, if you'll only sell it to me. I'll not disturb himself. $7,500. <laughs> uh, $10,000 in cash. Trapdoor, you should never have done himself out of his rightful wages. I've a hunch he'll never listen to you until the price is twice the amount. Why don't you go out and get a gun and rob stagecoaches? I seem to be doing all right without it. So I said this fellow, you're gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Hopsing, is this what you do in your day off? Uh, Missy and they teach Hopsing make a fairly fine tiny dish. Hong Kong mulligan. <laughs> bye bye, you know how to come to Lesla no more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're doing fine. $25,000. I'll speak to himself about it. I had finally convinced her I no longer wanted to be a partner in the restaurant, but I kept getting indications that I was still involved. Hey, hey, hey! Why did you tell us, Adam? You and Annie, ain't it wonderful? What are you talking about? Hey, can you imagine, Paul, Adam and Annie getting married? Adam and Annie? Yeah. Where's that Swede? Oh, he went prospecting. Prospecting where? I don't know. I, I think he said Africa. Hey, son, Africa? Son, how far is this thing gone? It hasn't gone anywhere, but it's about to. Adam, don't you hurt Annie's feelings. It wasn't her feelings I was thinking about hurting you. Uh, 
Annie, what's this about a wedding? How can there be a wedding when I don't even know where the Swede went? Oh, the Swede. Adam, he's still mad at me for what I done. Said he never wanted to see me again. And me loving him all these years, selling his claim for him. And getting all this money for him, too. Just you wait and see. There. Annie, where did you get all this? Trapdoor Gregory. I sold out to him. For this and the best funeral for himself that money can buy. Well, there, must, there must be $20,000 here. Well, Twenty-five. This is the first down payment. You see, I get 5% of the gross take of the mine for the rest of my natural life. Oh, I tried hard to learn business from you, Adam. I hope I done good. 5% of the gross? Annie, you've done real good. I done it for Swede. Oh, you did it. That I did. But it's no more than fair. It's what he should have had in the first place. Oh, Adam. I was going to move himself onto the other claim. The Swede and me was going to get married. I was going to build a fine mansion and live like a real lady. And now the Swede has gone off and left me. Oh, don't you worry, Annie. I'll take care of everything for old time's sake. Do you really think you could? Mm -hmm. Oh, you're a darling man. Huh? <laughs> it took a bit of doing, but we did it. And it was quite a day. Kevin himself, O'Toole, had a funeral that Comstock would remember for a long time to come. And to make it stick in everyone's mind, it was the day Virginia City got its first fire engine. But what really made it such a grand day was the fact that trapdoor Gregory Spain paid for every bit of it. Uh, would you turn him around so he can see the new saloons? Then he'll know he's not in a heathen land. Again, Gregory Spain's Lundberg number no. one became a famous mine. But it wasn't one tenth as rich as the one on the Swede's other claim, which turned into one of the most fabulous strikes of the whole Comstock load. The Swede? <laughs> nah, he hadn't gone to Africa at all. It meant roisting every saloon on the Barbary Coast, but uh, we finally found him and even dried him out. And after paying their respects to himself and his ever-loving monument, the lucky stiff mine, Mr. and Mrs. Lundberg embarked on a trip to Europe to soak up culture and achieve Annie's dream of really becoming a lady. And when they came back, Annie and the Swede built themselves a great mansion on the road between Virginia City and Reno. And I wouldn't be surprised if that mansion would still be there a hundred years from today.
What's this for? <laughs> because I love you. And because this is my engagement party. Now, remember, you promised no talking about mine business tonight. Promise? I promise. you ever pry him away? <laughs> it wasn't too hard to do. Well, I told him if he didn't come to this party, I'd uh, refuse to be best man and marry you myself. I didn't want to take that chance. <laughs> Forget about being superintendent for one night, Gil. The mine will run all right without you. I sent the night shift back to work on the third level. You what? I told you we couldn't work the third level without new timbering. Dad, you promised no mine talk. new safety timbering. I'm doing all I can. Come on, dear, you ought to go home. It's all right. You'll be all right. I know you. You said that third level wasn't safe, but you sent the ship in anyway. You said yourself it wasn't safe. Now get out of the way, Tregellis. You used to be one of us. Now you're marrying Holloway's daughter. Gil's doing everything he can, Tregellis. When? Like always? When it's too late? My kid brother's down there. Now you get out of my way, Cartwright. All right, stand yeah, by. Right. Keep on back. It's coming up now. Give us room. There's two of them. Move on back. It's Pat! Pat! All right, bring him on out. Pat! Thank God you're here. East Slope, third level. Every timber seemed to buckle at once as they set off a blast above us. Same as last week. Every time it's the same thing. Move out of the way. Hey, you're not going down there, are you? If I'd stayed down there where I belong, this might not have happened. Don't let what Tregala said get under your hide. If my kid brother was trapped down there, I'd think of something worse to say than Tregala said. Adam, you don't have to come down with me. It's my timber you're using, isn't it? All right, bud. Let her go. How do they stand it time after time? It's like living on top of a powder cake waiting for that disaster whistle to blow. It's part of mining, Helene. Entered on the report. Make sure each of the widows gets a usual box of groceries. Yes, sir. Box of groceries in exchange for a dead husband? It's company policy. That's a terrible thing. I'm sorry this had to happen tonight. Spoil your party, Helen. This is ridiculous. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. Let's go home and get some sleep. Daddy, those women won't sleep tonight. They each have a man down there, and so do I. Gil. Oh, oh Gil, are you all right? I'm all right. want to tell them? Tell them what? That there's nobody else coming up out of there. 
Not tonight. Not ever. How soon can you give me a report? It'll be on your desk. Cold black figures against a white piece of paper. Five dead, two dying, five missing, 14 injured, but no slow up in production, Mr. Holloway. Does that make you happy? Stop it, Gil. I'm sick of it. Gil, you, you shouldn't have gone down there. No, that's right. I should have stayed at the party. I'm a superintendent now, and the men I used to work with aren't human beings anymore. Aren't you being a little bit melodramatic? Am I? You... You should have been down there with us. That was melodramatic, too. I've had my share of mind disasters. But you don't have to face those men every day or those women. I do! It's not my job to manage the men. Not your job. Well, haven't you got the guts to stand up to them and order them into a mine that isn't safe enough for a rat? The old fear is safe as any mine on the Comstock. That's saying a lot, isn't it? Gil, please. What were you doing down there? I was checking the timbering. I've got a man hired to do that. I know. Philip Dietersheimer. I was hoping to talk with him. I run the old fear mine, Adam. You sell me timber for that mine. It's worked out very well for both of us. Suppose we keep it that way. Would you like a brandy? You must be tired, Helene. Come over here. Sit down. Close to me a minute. I want to talk to you about Gil. I'm as fond of Gil as you are. If I didn't think he'd make you a good husband, I'd have fired him instead of promoting him. Gil's a superintendent now. He doesn't have to go underground anymore. Daddy, those men are his friends. You, you can't expect him to forget that. I had to forget. It's a lesson I had to learn. Stay on your own level. That's my job, and I have to do it. Don't you think I have bosses? My bosses have no faces, no hearts, no souls. But they've got a stock certificate. If I get soft or sentimental, they use it as a club to beat my brains out. I've fought a long time to get what I've got, and I'll fight to keep it. I believe Gil was thinking about preventing another accident, not about your stockholders. Honey, believe me, it gets pretty lonely up here on this level. The higher a man stands, the farther he can see. I have to do what I think's best for the most people. Try to understand that. I am trying to understand it, Dad. Oh, good morning. How'd you get into town so early? Well, I yanked him out of bed, that's why. <laughs> Coffee? No, thanks. Gil, you still think it'd be worthwhile for me to talk to Dietersheimer? My future father-in-law doesn't seem to think so. But I still do. That's why Holloway likes you. You stand up to him. Hey, who's going to pay for this? I don't know. I'm too sleepy to try and figure it out. 
I can't figure out who's going to pay for it on an empty stomach. You better bring me another steak. Uh, Mr. Fenton. Mr. Fenton. Would I uh, talk to you? What is it, Trigalis? Well, last night, uh, my kid brother was down in the mine. I should have known he'd be all right. Well, I said things I shouldn't have. It's all right, Trigalis. I understand. Well, I, I wouldn't want to lose my job or anything like that, you know. You won't, not over this. Thanks. Gil? <laughs> Same old Gil, you ain't changed. And, and, and listen, all this talk about uh, shutting down the mine, for, uh, safety tests and all that, uh, don't you do it, Gil. As long as there's a hole in the ground, me and the boys will go down into it. We don't want to lose no day's pay. Somebody's afraid of getting a rock on top of the head. And uh, Mr. Cartwright, I don't blame you for poking me in the whiskers. But, uh, next time, uh, don't do it so hard. Have you seen Philip Dietersheimer? Dutchman? I don't understand that one. He's the only man I ever knew who could look a hole straight through you without even seeing you. Well, has he been around? He's been down that hole since 10 minutes after you left last night. Either he comes up for air pretty soon, or he's going to find nobody here to work this hoist when he rings that bell. Will you stay around for a little while? Mm. Take care of this for me, will you, Casey? Gail! Gail, I've been looking all over for you. Not now, dear. Adam and I want to go down below and look around for a minute. Oh. If it were another woman, I could face it, but to have a silver mine for a romantic rival. <laughs> hey. Oh, Gil. Please be careful. If anything happened to you. <laughs> Off you go. Oh. All right, love. Let her go. Good sound timbering, Gil, but it just isn't holding. It's not usually so, but here in these mines, there's such great variance of temperatures. There's a constant shrinking and expanding of the earth itself. When I took my pick and loosened this hanging wall behind the upright, so... <coughs> Cave this in deliberately? You might have been killed, man. So, the important thing is five men were killed last night. You see, killed, there's an unusual side pressure against these uprights. And without tower braces to prevent side motion. Oh, Philip, this is Adam Cartwright. Adam Philip Dietersheim. Mr. Cartwright. Hadn't you better take some time off, get some rest, have something to eat? The widows of those men, they have no appetite this morning, Gil. Neither have I. You mentioned tower bracing, Mr. Cartwright. You perhaps worked in construction, no? Well, I supply the timber for the mines. My father and I, my brothers, we have a ranch. And what a ranch, Philip. The Ponderosa, a thousand square miles of it. And wait till you see the house. Adam designed and built it to last a hundred years. Oh? You must see it. Yeah, yeah. There are so many things in your beautiful country that I must see. But how can I look at beauty when men are dying? Given time is one of the factors. There is no problem in engineering that cannot be solved. Mr. Dietersheimer, Gill's told me a great deal about you, and, well, I don't mean to be presumptuous, but if you'd care to have me go over your stress calculations with you, or, <laughs> what I mean is that uh, if you'd like to use me as a sounding board, I've kept up with my mathematics. It would mean a great deal to me to have someone to talk with, someone who understood the engineering problem. Well, I'd be honored, Mr. Dietersheimer. Well, then you call me Philip. Huh? So we do not waste time.
Where's Gil? He was right behind us. Can you see him? Uh, no. <coughs> Gil? Gil, can you hear me? Just as thousands before us have waited. And we think of many things. That is the final refuge of a man when he's completely alone. He can think. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. My brother's down there. Awesome. I just heard about it, Miss Elaine. Don't worry, I'm Gil's gonna be all right now. Please don't do that, ma'am. Everything's gonna be all right. Sorry, Mr. Cartwright. I have orders to let no outsiders go down. Well, your orders just changed. Let her go, Bo. Wait a minute, boys. Wait a minute. Them. Get in there, boys. Please with yourselves. Get the loose stuff out. What are you thinking about now? I was thinking, and perhaps after today, we will not let the mine fall on our heads again. <laughs> Well, there is a simple way. All we have to do is never again go into a mine. So many people make that decision in life. So very many. Boys, we may as well give up. They don't answer the signal anymore. Back of that wall of rock, but we're too late. They don't answer anymore. Give me that shovel. some light. It's about time you got here. Gil's back there somewhere. Adam, there ain't nothing back there but five on a dull rock. You, Mr. Dina Sharma. All right. Phil, see if you can make it. Uh, got him, horse? Yeah, I got him. Uh, easy, easy. He might have a broken bone. Here's one of them, boys. Let's get it. Take him out, boys. Here we are. Yeah. Here they come. Yeah. 
Miss Elaine, I, I want to talk to you. Zap Gil. He's always the first one down and the last one up. I suppose he's still down there looking around. That's what it is, Hoss, isn't it? Ma'am, let me take you home. Oh, no. No, I've, I've got to wait here for Gil. He promised me nothing would happen to him. He promised me. Oh, Hoss. Oh, Hoss, tell me nothing's happened. I can't lie to you. I can't make it no easier on you. I've got to see him. I've got to go down. I, I've got to see him. Don't you understand? I've got to see him! I've got to see him! Where's Gil? He's still down there. Well, go get him, Adam. I want to talk to him. What I'm trying to tell you is... What he means is... Gil is dead, Daddy. What? That's the word he was looking for, dead. But it's a dirty word and no one wants to say it. Not here in this house. Not on this level. The stockholders might hear. Dead is, is a word for, for men who work down in the ground. Not for people like us. We, we can't talk about a man who's buried under 50 tons of rock, but he's dead just the same. Oh, Daddy. Hey, I'll give her a sedative. You come along. You too. Gil, dead. Well, I'll have to hire a new superintendent. Mr. Holloway. If that's the first thing you thought about, I feel real sorry for you. Uh, I guess that should about do it. Thanks, Doc. Mr. Dietishammer, I told you to get some rest. Now, you're pushing yourself much too far. Would you rest, Doctor, if there were a plague afoot? And that somewhere in that little black bag of yours, there was a pill you knew could cure it? Would you rest until you had found that pill? Well, my head is like your little black bag. Somewhere inside it is a pill of information, long forgotten. A solution to these mind disasters. I have to find that pill, Doctor. Well, you better slow down or I won't be responsible. Every man is responsible to himself, Doctor. Does your head feel good enough to use? Let's get to work. Now... <clears throat> Mr. Dietersheimer, I've been thinking. Are you an engineer? Well, no, but... Then I'm not in the least interested in what you've been thinking. Please go. Now, wait a minute. This is my home. At the moment, it is my office. And I want no interruptions. Please. Now. So, we have... Why aren't you at work? Mr. Holloway, I refuse to send those men back down. You refuse? I believe the same as Gill. Close down a few days. Get a chance to make some proper tests and experiments. Casey, you're fired. What? I said you're fired. Mr. Gallus, can you handle Casey's job? Mr. Holloway. I never did want to see you shut down. Like I said to Gil last time I talked to him. I can get that shift back to work. See that you do. Another thing I'd do, Mr. Holloway, I'd order that Dutchman to stay away from the men. He wastes an awful lot of time. I'd tell him to take care of his own work, leave our boys alone. You're in charge, go tell him. He's right upstairs. 
That is the problem, Adam, and it is increasing every day. The veins of silver grow wider the deeper they go. I know, and the U-bracing that we use in a narrow stope becomes worthless in a 65-foot wide gallery. And it's not only the overhead pressure, Adam. There's a constant side pressure as well. I want to talk to you, Dutchman. Vertical bracing and cap pieces, certainly. But it would be standing so thick that a man couldn't get through. I'm in charge now. We are very busy. And even the tower bracing you suggested... Listen to me when I'm talking to you. You're going to take orders just like the rest of the men. But how are you going to get 65-foot timbers down a mine shaft? And I want you to stay away from the men, hear me? They're down there to work, not to visit with you. And another thing, Dutchman. I believe in a little formality. Now, oh, where were we? Oh, yeah. There's... Miss Helene. Miss Helene. I know you're sorry. That's not exactly what I was going to say, ma'am. Folks mean well when they say that they're sorry. It's like when my mama was still alive. I remember I used to bash my finger and she'd kiss it and tell me the pain was all gone. It wasn't really. It's just that now when I try to remember the pain, all I can remember is my mama kissing it away. So I smile bravely and lift my head. And there never was a Gil Fenton in my life. No. No, you... You can sometimes forget the pain, but... You can't ever forget the love. Never. There's gonna always be a Gil Fenton in your life. I remember... I was in love once with a girl. As much in love as a man can be, I reckon. I guess that sounds a little funny to me, don't it? Oh, no, it doesn't, Hoss. She died. I know that my Paul and Adam and little Joe sorry. That just wasn't enough. Not right then, it wasn't. What did you do? I talked to God. He told me I was just going to have to keep on living. to enter your mind, Mr. Tagalis. All right. Go ahead. Deep, sir. Adam told me to find you and tell you that, that number six had shifted and that the tower braces were 10 degrees out of plumb, whatever that means. It means, Horst, that we now know one more thing that will not work. It means also that we must still find that one thing that will work. Well, he told me I ought to talk you into getting some rest, too. Uh, well, he may have said it. But he didn't mean for me to do it. But it would be good. So good. Stretch out for a while. Close my eyes against the sun. And feel the life of the earth beneath me. But I would feel only the death, horse. Only the death. You, you feel all right, Mr. DeSarmer? All right? I do not know. That is a relative question, no? I only know that my head is so full of vertical braces and cross braces and cap pieces and stulls and timbers that my brain is like a beast form of unrelated facts buzzing and churning and working within a hive. A honeycomb. A honeycomb! Sir? I have it, Oz, I have it! You 
What? Go get me some one-inch boards. Soft pine that I can cut with a jackknife. Go, go bring them to my room. I go get Adam. Why did I not see this, Adam? Each surface bearing on the other. The ratio of strength of each side of a honeycomb to the combined weight of the honey. Gently now. Gently. Come. Thank you, Oros. Now, what in the blaze? The solution, is it? Mr. Holloway. The solution to every cave in and slippage problem in the Comstock mines. Boss, please. Clean place on the table. Thank you. Miss Lee, look here what Mr. Dieter's hammer and Adam built. Show them how it works, Mr. Dieter's hammer. Do you mean that's a system of mind bracing? It's the most perfect system I've ever seen in my whole life. Are you such an expert? No, but Mr. Dieter's hammer is. Philip, why don't you explain the principle? Uh, you see, Mr. I Holloway. can see the principle. Square, open-sided, tower-bracing box, bearing equal pressure from all angles. Uh -huh. And I suppose, as the stope is dug wider, you propose to add another box. Well, you can add them above, too, and you can even build a floor in it. Very interesting, gentlemen, and very expensive. We can't use it. Dad. Aren't you even going to consider it? But look at it, honey. It's a child's toy, a plaything of an impractical dreamer. You didn't even give them a chance. A chance to what? Play with toys while I've got a mind to run? Do you think I'm going to rip out the timbering I've got in that mind to try some crazy new idea? But the timbering system you have is no good. We've been operating successfully with it for a long time now. Can't you understand I've got stockholders to think about? Oh, yes, I understand. You and your faceless stockholders. Well, I have somebody to think about, too. Only he had a face and a body and arms to hold me with. And he's buried under 50 tons of rock and you put him there! Helene! Wait a minute. Where are you going? Where do the rest of the mine widows go? If you'd only listen to me. I'm through listening to you, Father. And don't forget to send me my box of groceries. Oh. Well, we've been looking for you. Uh. I've been looking for myself, Adam. His new model's coming along great. Well, I have created a good thing. But that is all it is. A thing. A handful of smoke. What good is it to write a book if nobody reads it? Or to compose a song if nobody ever sings it? Or to invent a new way of timbering a mine if it is not used? Don't you worry. It'll be used all right. But when? When? When another hundred men have died needlessly? Well, it's such a radical departure from anything we've done before. Just take time to sell it to anyone. Only the dead have time to wait, Adam. And we are concerned with the living. Well, the Ophir isn't the only mine on the Comstock. There's the uh, Yellow Jacket, Gould and Curry, and the Mexican. We know the owners. We've sold timber to all of them. All we have to do is sell one of them the idea. Look, I am not a fishmonger, Adam. Hawking a product on the streets. <laughs> well, then you let me worry about that end of it. You just finish this new model. Looks pretty elaborate. Well, it's quite simple, really. Series of cribs, each surface bearing on the other. Now, that takes care of your side motion, which has been one of your big problems. Now, also, you see, with the wide veins that you're starting to hit, you can timber as you stope in merely by adding another crib. Now, the same holds true with working up above or down below, which is an impossibility with your present timbering. Now, here you could uh, have an ore chute uh, running diagonally right up here through the sets. Any idea of the cost? Well, it really hadn't gone into it. I think Mr. Dietersheimer was more concerned with safety rather than cost. <laughs> yeah, I'd heard that he was pretty much of a dreamer. Well, thanks for showing it to us, Adam. Hey, ain't you even gonna let him finish telling you about it? Oh, I've seen enough to recognize the fact that the cost would be prohibitive. I'm afraid you'll have to figure out some other way of selling timber, Adam. 
You mean to tell me you think that's all Adam and Mr. Dietersheimer have been doing day and night is figuring out another way to sell timber? Oh, stay out of it, horse. I won't stay out of it. I don't like what this woodpecker's saying to you. Oh, really, now? We don't have to pretend with each other. We're in the mining business to make money, and you should be able to understand that. No Cartwright ever made a move unless there was a dollar in it for him someplace. Mister, you're the biggest flannel mouth liar in the Comstock. Do you know who I am? I sure do, and you do too, because I just got through telling you. My brother isn't the world's finest diplomat, but he's managed to express my own feelings pretty accurately. Well, good. it might work. Sure, but the system we're using now can be put in for one-tenth the cost. Why did Holloway ever hire that Dutchman in the first place? Oh, now don't sell Holloway short. He hires this safety engineer and the Crusaders leave him alone. I know, but now he's come up with this fantastic you idea. You don't find Holloway using it, do you? Well, is there anybody else we can talk to, Adam? Uh, that's about all of them. Besides, I'm tired of talking. You ain't gonna give up, are you? Yeah, I said I'm tired of talking. Well, what are we gonna do? What do the card rights always do when it comes right down to it? We'll do it ourselves. You mean we're going to make a big one of these things and stick it down old Holloway's mind without even telling him about it? Why well, tell him? He'll know it's there when he sees it tomorrow. Tomorrow? I said tomorrow. Adam, I heard you and Mr. Dieter Sammer talking, and them timbers are big, and they got to be milled and cut. How are you going to do all that by tomorrow? Well, now, we own a sawmill, don't we? Now, we'll just give this job to our younger brother and tell him it's impossible to do. <laughs> Yeah, that ought to do it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get started first thing in the morning. That's what old Adam said, and we will, too. You wait and see. When my pa and Adam and my younger brother, little Joe, put their head to something, it gets done. <laughs> You're very proud of your family, aren't you, horse? Yes, sir, I sure am. Well, it's a fine thing to have a strong family. Yes, sir. Paul's always kept us mighty close together. You see, we just half brothers. So? Yes, sir. My my Paul's had a terrible lot of tragedy in his life. Tragedy. Yeah. But this has made of him a finer man. And it's helped draw you all closer together as a family, no? Yes, sir. I reckon it has. The girl, Helene. We must try to make her see this horse. Right now, she sees only her own loss. But nothing is lost, ever. And nothing is ever destroyed. The miners who were killed because of improper timbering in these mines, they have found a new method of timbering horse. I did not do it. They did. I am only to the instrument that carried out the plan. No more than that. Mr. Dieter Sommer, folks are gonna remember you for an awful long time. Miss Wayne, sit down, Miss Holloway. Please. What's the matter? Matter? I've been walking around looking into the faces of women who've lost their husbands in the mines. I've been searching their eyes, wondering if they know my father is a murderer. Well, you shouldn't know to talk like that. Not about your own Paul. No. Maybe he ain't done all he could do, but at least he's tried. He hired Mr. Dieter But he hasn't let him do anything, and he won't. Well, it don't really make no difference if he don't, because we're going to do it anyhow. What do you mean? Paul and Adam and little Joe are up there in the hills right now at the sawmill, milling the timber we're going to put down that mine. So Mr. Dietersheimer here can make the test he wants to make. Does my father know about this? Well, I, I reckon Adam sort of forgot to tell him. <laughs> do you really think that my father and the other mine owners would let you do this? Well, Ma'am, we ain't going to charge him for it. Besides, how are they going to stop us? Stop you? Haas, don't you understand? They can hire 50 men with clubs to stop you if they want to. What do they want to do a thing like that for? I'm afraid this does go much further than a, a test installation horse. Once it's in there and the men see it, they won't be satisfied with any other system of timbering. 
What's the deal, Simon? Do you want that timber down there in that mine? Yeah, very much, horse. Well, we're going to put it down there for you. And if any of them fellas try to stop us, well, I, I reckon that'll be my business. See my father with him. There's a rumor around that you plan to do some special timbering in Mr. Holloway's mine. Well, this is one time that a rumor's correct. You Cartwrights don't own this mine. You've got no business here. Now, you don't own this mine either, mister. Why don't you let Mr. Holloway tell me? We haven't been able to find Mr. Holloway, but his interests are ours, and we're here to see that they're protected. Take him off there. find you. We came here to protect your interests. I can take care of my own interest, and that's just what I've been doing. But they were planning to build some of those monkey cages down in your mine. I'm aware of what they're planning to do. I'm helping them to do it. Why, Andrew, have you lost your senses? No, I haven't lost my senses. I've just found them. How long since any of you have been down in one of your mines? Well, maybe you should, gentlemen. I just did, and I don't like what I saw. I don't know if Mr. Dietzheimer's system of timbering will work or not, but he's going to get a chance to try it. Adam, one of the boys will unload that lumber right where you want it. If you need me, we'll just holler. This is fine. You go now, huh? Thank you. Are you satisfied, Philip? Uh, it is still an impractical man's dream, Adam. Uh, an invention is never completed until it is put to the test of serving the purpose for which it was designed. You wait for me up above, huh? I would like to stay here and look at this for a while. Oh, no, you don't. What's the matter? I found your bag. The powder, you didn't do a good job of hiding it. It's too dangerous, Adam. I'm game if you are. I don't want any more men killed. Neither do I. But I would like to be with you. Sort of a promise I made to Gil. All right. We'll see this thing two together. This is good. Now for the final test. Why, you're wasting our time, Holloway. You better take a good look at it, because you're going to see a lot of this kind of timbering from now on. <laughs> Not in my mind, you won't. <laughs> well, this is it. Good luck, Philip. Come. Mr. Holloway, you should not be here. It's still my mind, and he's 
gentlemen are a little hard to convince. You don't understand. We're making a test. Don't test it too hard or your monkey cage will fall down on your head. I hope not, gentlemen. I believe not. But we will soon know. We've set a blast to test it. <laughs> I can imagine you're being down here with a blast about to go off. Your workmen do it every day, don't they? Oh, yes, but with With the... your present system of timbering. Well, you're standing up to some of it now, gentlemen. You may stay here. You'll feel safer. I prefer to stay over here. So do I. <laughs> Why, you fool, we'll all be killed. Boys, the old timberinger is right behind you. Go ahead, stay under it. You better hurry. <laughs> This held up rather well, don't you, gentlemen? <coughs> Very impressive. But I still won't hold still for it. And why not? Isn't it pretty obvious? This man undoubtedly has a patent on his timbering system and plans to rob us blind collecting royalties. I'm afraid I'm not so wise as you. I do not know the dollar and cent worth of a human life. I only know it is very dear. I have no patent, no desire to charge royalty. If my invention saves human lives, Surely that is payment enough for any man. Wait a minute, Philip. Ladies and gentlemen, we've just made a practical test of the new Dietisheimer system of timbering. Any of these gentlemen here can attest to the fact that it was a complete success. Oh. I'm closing the Ophir till it's completely retimbered with the Dietisheimer square sets. Every man will be paid his regular wages while the work goes on. Here's the man who's put an end to all the mine cave-ins on the Comstock, Mr. Philip Dietersheimer. Every mine owner will have to put in square sets now. You watch. This whole town will be sitting on one big honeycomb. It's a great thing you've done, Philip. We all did it together. Well, listen, I, I'm hungry. Ain't you starved? On the contrary, horse. Right now, I feel, I feel very full. Mr. Dieter Simmer, I, I told you once that folks was gonna remember you for an awful long time. And they would, too, if they could remember your name, but it's so dang blasted hard to pronounce. <laughs> Don't worry about that, horse. Names are never very important. Anyway, it's easier to pronounce the Dutchman. Come on, let's get some supper, huh?